Heffernan was, uh, as many people in this room might know, he was a brilliant hurler and a footballer in his own right. Uh, he won many county titles with his St Vincent's club. He won an All-Ireland, captain Dublin to an All-Ireland in 1958. He was recognised in the GAA's team of the century and the GAA's team of the millennium. But it is for his role in stewarding Dub the rise of Dublin football in the 1970s and the early 1980s uh, that he is best remembered and most revered. And that's not surprising uh, in many ways. Um, prior to the 1970s, uh, prior to the 1970s, success for Dublin uh, in, in Gaelic football or in hurling was sporadic at best. They won three All-Irelands of Gaelic football in that 50-year period from the mid-1920s to the 1950s, and they were won in three separate decades. There was no sustained period of success. Then, in the 1970s, you have four, three All-Irelands won in four years. You have every All-Ireland final contested between 1974 and 1979. Three more All-Irelands contested uh, in the 1980s, and a further All-Ireland added to that, uh, to that number. Um, that is quite the transformation. In December in 1972, Dublin were not only beaten, they were hammered by Longford in a National League game at the beginning of a campaign which see, would see them fall through the trap door of Division 1, one football in, Dublin, in, in, in the country. Uh, they would be relegated to, to Division 2 from which they would launch their successful All-Ireland campaign in 1974. The lowly status of Dublin football was such that Jimmy Gray, uh, the Nafina club man and uh, county board chairman, uh, remarked in the mid 1970s that it was clear that something would have, something dramatic, would have to be done to jolt Dublin, jolt the city out of the lethargy to which it had quite obviously uh, succumbed. Now, in connecting with a new generation of urban youth, um, that the team of the 1970s helped fortify. The GAA to meet the challenge, the subsequent challenge, the subsequent onslaught of a more globalised sporting culture. Um, in 2004, at the beginning of a fascinating uh, interview with Kevin Heffernan in the Irish Times, uh, Tom Humphreys laid out as fact the following equation: No Heffo equals no Dubs equals no 70s equals no GAA in the city, equals slow death for the GAA, equals this country being a minor colony of Sky Sports Super Sundayland. Now that is quite the narrative uh, chain of cause and effect. He said in that interview, a complete reconstruction of social activity of an adult nature is required to attract and hold the interest of a number and quality of people required to maintain the GAA's position. This should be broad enough to cater for families and including the ladies is an important part. It must be stressed for the No Change Brigade that this approach is not a replacement of providing sporting facilities for youth, youth but rather an aid to achieving that aim. This vision of club life articulated by Heffern was very much in keeping with the, way the, with, way, with the way the GAA was moving in any way. One of the paradoxes of the way the GAA responded to demographic change in Ireland is that it redefined, to secure its sporting future, it redefined itself as something other than a sporting organisation. It was fortuitous that the Dublin team arrived in the 1970s at the very time when the GAA was worried about its future, particularly, uh, particularly in Dublin. Now, whatever about driving participation, I'm going to touch on that later, uh, what the breakthrough of Heffernan's team at least did was it infused the GAA into the social and cultural bloodstream uh, of the city. Uh, Mike Michal O'Hare in 1975 kind of caught that uh, sense in an article he wrote in, 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 in one of the GAA magazines. He wrote that in schools, offices and sidewalks, people are alive to the fact that the city and county has a team worthy of their respect and their support. And while I don't think there's any argument but that Mick O'Dwyer was the most successful of the two managers, the, I think it can also be argued that the most culturally significant uh, was Heffernan. And that significance is rooted, I think, in the impact that team had in connecting with a, a very new generation of urban youth. Now, when we talk about youth, when we talk about youth in Ireland, um, you know, it's, it's not a word that was actually used prior to the 1950s. 
and its emergence in Irish society is kind of rooted in forces uh, both from without and both and within the society. Um, it's f it was forged as a result of imported cultural forms, the impact of cinema, the impact of rock and roll, the impact of imported programming on the new Irish television service from 1962 onwards. Throughout 1974, as Dublin progressed in that championship, there was a snowballing uh, of, of, of support. And what you saw emerge was a fan cul culture that borrowed liberally from the soccer stadiums uh, of, 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 of the UK. Uh, there's a picture on the wall over here, it's here behind me, uh, of the guards um, hoisting players off the Crow Park pitch towards the end of 1974 final. Heffernan was brought onto the field to help the guards remove the crowds from, from the pitch. He wrote subsequently of his memory of that day and the impact it made on him. It was personally uncomfortable to be at the centre of it, but it was spectacular. You could feel that you were part of something new and unique. 